Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to the third online edition of the Pet on Brands Dialogues. I am Pat Masang. Today I'll be chatting to Kolisa Geshan, a Chief Creative Officer at Your Public, about all things creativity. Due to technical glitches, the video starts abruptly. Enjoy. We were speaking and I asked him to, to, to be on the platform as a precursor, you know, just to give you guys a taste of what this uh, awesome man is about, you know and also for him to share with us some insights in terms of what we need to be uh, looking out for as marketers, as, as entrepreneurs from a create, uh, creativity point of view. You know, I'm not gonna waste any time, but I uh, just wanna give him the platform to sort of tell us who he is, where he comes from, and how did, we, did he get where he is today? Gee, <laughs> um, it's always an interesting question that. Um, Basically, my name is Kolisa Jeshana. I am the chief creative officer uh, of a locally owned agency called Joe Public. Um, we're a full service agency out of Bryanston and we are wholly South African owned. And basically my story, um, if I had to summarize it, I'm from the Eastern Cape, uh, I'm the last out of seven brothers. Uh, my parents saved up all the money so that they could send me to English schools. And so, and so eventually when we were allowed to go in 1991, um, I, when I, I was went. Born. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like to tell people that's when I was born. Okay. Um, <laughs> but basically, uh, my parents sent me to a school called Selborne in the Eastern Cape. And it was pretty amazing to have that opportunity because for the first time, when you are going to what was then called um, Model C schools, um, it's for the first time that you realize that some of the things that you may not be good at, I was okay at school. Um, I wasn't really... Uh, I, 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 I was good at what I enjoyed, but uh, not necessarily, I wasn't the top student. Um, I had particular interest around arts and culture, drama, uh, choir throughout my, my schooling years. And particularly in high school, I think the one thing that um, that environment provided, which you don't usually get, um, mm -hmm. is... is they had courses for people that were interested in art. And so my world was opened in that way where I did art as a subject. I learned about some of the different careers that you can get into when it comes to art. So, you know, going into matric, uh, got to matric, got my exemption. And the real question was whether one would be going to varsity or not. And when I went to my parents to tell them, well, now's the time for us to make this decision. Uh, my parents said, we think you may have missed the small print in the memo. And that is the fact that all the money that we saved for you, uh, we've now used up to get you through the school. Two years after, after you are at the school, your dad will still be paying off the school. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, uh, varsity is not an option for you. And, and it was a very interesting thing for me because it's, it's funny because it's something that I've thought about later on in life. I think when you're going through these things, you don't realize a lot of what's going on. Yeah. So there I was in Danzane uh, watching my friends, because this is the other thing when you get to go to these schools, you know, we, we're not all from the same circumstances. Absolutely. So, but the assumption is when, when you're a kid and you, and you are in high school and you're all getting along, the assumption is everybody's having conversations about so are you off to UCT? Are you off to whatever, you know? Yeah. And in my case, there was none of the above. My parents sure. said, you've got to look around whether there's something around Tanzania, maybe East London there. Mm. Uh, but unfortunately, varsity is, is, is by the pipe dream at this stage. And it was around that time that I found out, um, I, I remember, so I knew that I wanted to do something to do with design or art. And I found out that East London College, there was a college in East London that, you know, that, that had a graphic design course. And, and, you know, I was looking at that. I went to 
check it out. I didn't really dig it. And I sat and I was not doing anything for about, for about uh, a month into the new year. All my friends had left, you know, gone to all the varsities, others gone to all the expenses. And this is the thing that a lot of people don't un understand about advertising schools. Advertising schools are more expensive than even your university. So, so that's last number. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, 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 you know, so I was sitting there moping, had no idea where I was going to go, wake up every day, I'm at my house in Tanzania, there's nothing to do. And it was my brother who phoned me. Uh, my brother was at what is today called Cape Peninsula University of Technology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it, 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 back then, there were, there was, they were separated, okay? So you had Cape Tech, yeah. which was for people who came from the schools that I came from. And, okay. and, and because, because, because that's where you had like the white people and stuff. And on the other side mm. of the railway tracks, you had something called Peninsula Technicon in Belleville. Oh, sure. And my brother was on the SRC of Peninsula Technicon. So my brother called me and my brother said, Chuck, what's your plan? And I said to him, but what do you mean? He said, what's your plan? You can't, you've gone through all these years of school, you've passed, yeah. you, there's no, there's no freaking gap year in our family. <laughs> <laughs> in our, in our family, there's no, there's, in our family, there's no gap years, there's no tantrums, you know, yeah. all those things that rich kids can afford. You know, rich kids can afford things like tantrums and, and yeah. gap years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he said to me, so he said to me, um, and yeah. the one thing, the one thing that you need to know about Apependek is that I'm on the SRC. Mm -hmm. So we can at least try and hustle a way for you to get in here. And I've looked and Le, Le Kosofunu Yenza is available here. Okay. So you need to get yourself onto a bus, some and whatever, a highway tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And you need to get yourself to freaking Cape Town so that at least you're doing something. And so, and so essentially, that's, that's how my whole thing started. I had to get myself out of that moping, got mm -hmm. onto a bus, went to a pendek, not a white person in sight. Sure. Um, no, it was so, quite something. So you're missing the lot. <laughs> hey, Chap, I was out here. I, I literally got there. Now, here's an interesting thing. And yeah. this, is a, this is a part of the story. This is a part yeah. of the story that I, that I, that I hardly tell people. Well, I, I didn't used to tell people, but, but lately, I, in the last couple of years of my life, I've been fine. Do you know that I used to make up a part of my story that wasn't true around this part? <laughs> because I was so ashamed. I was so ashamed that yeah. I couldn't go to university. I couldn't even go to a cake deck. So yeah. I, I used to make up a lie and I used to say that I was accepted at the Cape Tech. Ne? Yeah, yeah. And then I used to say that I went to Cape Tech. Ne? And then mm. I used to say that uh, I was in the line at Cape Tech getting ready to register. Yeah. And then all around me, I just heard all these accents, accents, accents. <laughs> then I thought, and then I thought to myself, hey, I, but this yeah. place doesn't need me. This place doesn't need me. There's enough of me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And based on that, I got yeah. out of the line and I went to register at Pentec. It was a total <laughs> bullshit lie. It was never such sure. a thing, but I just felt so ashamed that literally yeah. I, could not, I could not afford to go to any of that. Cut the sure. long story short, I went to Pentec and I registered for the graphic design course. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember, I remember they, they had this, this test that you've got to do, so I did this test to get in. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they failed me. Sure. And they failed me, and my brother went, yeah. and, uh, and 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 already we had lied. By we had lied that the, the that the my, my that I applied in June already, and my application got lost in the mail. Now yeah. you must understand something: graphic design fell under the engineering faculty. Ne? Yeah. And if you know anything about about tertiary politics, most mm. of the political stuff happens around the business faculty. Absolutely. So the engineering faculty does, is not used to the political types. So when my mm. brother took me there, uh, already when he's talking about the fact that, you know, in his, in his political way, talking about the fact that, no, he applied, but his uh, application was application. lost in the mail. Yeah. There was lots of applications that were lost in the mail, you know, and then you can just see them escaping 
Flip, we don't get these, these, these types here. Okay, that's fine. He can do the test. And then they got me to do the test. And then I failed the test. Now he's got to go back to go and make a case for me. Yeah. Hey, he and, was a fighter. Kind of, Joe, he was a fighter. My brother, <laughs> my brother went back there. He said, I remember the dean's name was Mr. Daniels. Mr. Daniels? Mm. My brother spent the entire weekend doing yeah. this thing. <laughs> and he studied this thing at yeah. one of the top schools. Yeah. So all I'm saying to you is that if you won't accept my brother, I want yeah. proof that those other children that are sitting there also did it through a whole weekend. <laughs> because you've got no idea if they didn't get other people to do it for them. Sure. Hey, and I'll never forget. And then he said, Mr. Daniels, the yeah. SRC has not made trouble for engineering. We yeah. don't want to start now. Sure. <laughs> And then, and, then, and, then, and then based on that, I was accepted into, into it. The funny thing yeah. is, it, and it's a really, really funny story because when yeah, I look back in retrospect, it, yeah. in retrospect, you know what? I can tell you now, I kicked the living hell out of that, out of that test. But wow. I think, yeah, no, no, dude, I did art. Um, yeah. But unfortunately, I think just the inconvenience of having to submit or to admit a student late, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, you know? So it literally was one of those, and, um, and I got in, passed all my years, finished, um, decided to do my BTEC or honors, whatever you choose to call it, yeah. did my BTEC on, um, and, and, and that's when I fell in love with writing. Now, the interesting thing is, the reason why I love to tell this part of the story is, in many ways, you could say that this was like, this was like the worst things, all these things that I'm saying are the worst things that, that could happen. But if yeah. you get to know my story, you actually learn that these were the best things that could happen. And I'll Absolutely. tell you a couple of reasons why. Yeah. Um, around the time, around the time, Steve Jobs had just gotten back to Apple. And it okay. was around the time when uh, USAID, when, when the US was starting to give a lot back to, mm. um, to Africa and other countries, and especially third world countries. Yeah, yeah. And so... And so because we were this poor university or this poor Technicon, the first place that they sent the latest Apple Macs to was Peninsula Whoa. Technicon. Okay. So I got to work on the latest Macs. If you remember those Macs that look like apples and, you know, yeah. with, the, with all the different colors, with all the different colors at the back. The yeah, ones yeah. that were done by, it was actually, what's his name? Ive, uh, Johnny Ive's first design. We got those. Sure. Then they, then they came with the beautiful one that you could spin around, the, the white one with the dome at the bottom were the mm -hmm. first ones to get those. So I got to study on the best Max, even more so than my friends that had gone to AAA and all the other places. Yeah. Secondly, um, generally people that are in my field will know that if you come into advertising you, you, uh, on the creative side, yeah. you're either a writer or you're an art director. So oh, yeah. anytime if you look at a billboard, the writer did the writing, Yes. Um, the, the art director the did, did the visuals yes. and together they, they brainstormed the idea. Mm -hmm. In my tertiary, you couldn't afford to be either or, so you had to be both. Oh. So I got to, I got to learn both those skills. That's and then better. the third part, and exactly. And then the third part, which is, which is, which is actually quite a crazy mind boggle, mm -hmm. is that um, later on, when we get to where I am today, yeah. you'll learn that one of my business partners he, his parents um, saved up all this money and they sent him to the top, to one of the top art schools in South Africa. It was called Ruth Prowse. Mm -hmm. And to go to Ruth Prowse in Cape Town, you had to have a lot of money. Sure. And that's the other thing that you need to understand about why advertising is, is very expensive. Advertising yeah. was that field for, for white kids with a lot of money. White kids who didn't want to yeah. follow the, the well-worn path. That's, that's, yeah. that's where the, 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 the industry comes from. So anyway, yeah. so... My, my business partner, Pepe Marais, studied yeah. at Krauss years before mm. I got to tertiary. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is that when I got to tertiary, his lecturer, who was one of the best lecturers, her name was Edwina, her name is Edwina Simon. Mm -hmm. Edwina Simon decided that she's, she'd like to quit and she'd like to give back. Oh. And she then decided to come and be a lecturer, lecturer at, at the Ursula Technicon. Sure. So I always, so by, by the freaking shape of the stars, I got yeah. the same lecturer 
as what my business. So I always tease him about it. I always say, don't <laughs> yeah. think that you are better than me. When you and me had the same lecturer, the only difference yeah. is you paid for it and I didn't. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Great, man. So your first job? Yeah, so I couldn't get a job in advertising. I worked in a call center for over a year. Sure. Um, it was a very, very depressing time in my life. I, I, I applied for jobs within, I was working for Nuclex Holding. I was that guy. Mm -hmm. too. I was there. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. Um, sure. I'm here to talk to you about your Clicks Club card. Uh, you've got so many points. I was that ninja. And I thought I'd do Whoa. this thing for a month. I thought I'd do it for two months. I thought I'd do it for sure. three. And a year later, I was still there. I mm. would have to wake up in the morning at 5 a.m. I would have to take a train at half past five. Mm -hmm. I'd have to leave from Belleville on a train uh, for over an hour. And then I get to, and then I have to walk through one of the most dangerous streets in, 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 in Cape Town, yeah. uh, which is where Richard Stacher used to live. It was called Gimpy Street. And mm -hmm. then I would have to walk through a park. And then eventually I would get to the New Clicks Holding building, which was in Woodstock. Mm -hmm. Not the Woodstock, not the funky Woodstock we know now. <laughs> and then I'd, I'd make my way up, you know. So I, I had this job. And, and I just couldn't get a job in advertising. I applied for jobs within the Nuclex Holding Groups yeah. group, and I couldn't get a single job. Um, and I was just in a really, really bad state. I, I always, when I, when I tell my story, I always talk about the fact that I used to kick a can. Every time I go home, mm. I would kick a can. And, and, and I, was, I was very almost abusive to myself because I would tell myself sure. very negative things. I would tell myself mm. that you did all of this, your parents spent all this money, yeah, and yeah, look yeah. where you are. You know, yeah, and, and that's what sure. I think we all do. You compare yourself to your friends in varsity who are doing all these things and yet here you are. So yeah. I, used to, I would do that. And then one day a phone call came in and the phone call was from the top agency in South Africa. It was the biggest agency in South Africa at the time. Sure. It was called, uh, it's, 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 it was FCB, Foot Cone and Belding. Oh. And how's this for a contrast, okay? I can I'm imagine. working in the worst part of town in Woodstock back yeah. then. And the job interview is in Camps Bay. Yo. Did you apply for the job or? I had an agent. Oh, you had an agent. agent. And my agent really struggled to sell me because on my, on my, on my tertiary, uh, on my diploma, I've studied yeah. graphic design. But now mm. I, when, I did, when I did my thesis yeah. uh, in my honors year, I fell in love with writing. Oh. And so I had to explain that I, I did both of these things. So yeah, she yeah, struggled yeah. to sell me because she was saying, but on, on your papers, it says graphic design. I say, yes, I know, but I, I, we had to do both. Yeah. So anyway, I ended up going to this interview um, and the interview was in Camps Bay. I was interviewed by a guy named Philip van Rensburg. Okay. And I'll never forget, Philip said to me, if I give you this job, do you realize that I'll be taking it away from someone who has studied this thing? And what guarantee do I have that you will make a difference in, in, in my company? Yeah. And I said to him, sir, I can promise you now that I, I can't give you any of those guarantees. The only guarantee I can give you is that if you give me this chance, yeah. I'll be the hardest worker in this building. Wow. And I'll never forget, he did something. I, he did something. He took off his glasses. And I remember yeah. he went like this. I remember at that stage thinking to myself, I'll never wear glasses in my life. Um, <laughs> and he did that and he said, okay, you can start on Monday. Sure. And if you've ever seen that end scene from uh, The Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was me walking out of that building, looking around, yeah. looking at Camps Bay, looking at Camps Bay and yeah. thinking that this is where I'm about to be working. Whoa. And needless to say, dude, I can promise you that when I started working there, must remember now, yeah. I, you know, I hadn't done formal scripts, I hadn't done any of this stuff, but yeah. I can promise you that you would turn down my script, I would come back with 15. Sure. Anytime and every time. I was, I was that determined to get it right. I just, I just wanted to get it right beyond what you can imagine. And, and then the, the weirdest thing happened. Now this yeah. is, and, and this, this will probably give you an idea of pretty much where my career went after that. Yeah. The, the greatest thing that you could win at that time at, um, at FCB yeah. was something called the Raising the Bar Award. The, the company okay. stood for Raising the Bar. That was the company theme. It was the Raising yeah, yeah. the Bar Award. And, um, 
And what happened is they had this prize giving once a year and they yeah, only yeah. gave in, in a company of, I don't know how many hundreds of people, they yeah. only gave two of these things. Sure. And it usually like went to people that have been heading up departments, people that, you yeah. know, that have been with the company for X amount of years, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. I'll never forget, um, even whilst I was working there, my friends were all the guys that worked in the kitchen, the kitchen staff, uh, yeah. the guys that worked in the bar, those were my buddies, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I'll never forget, this thing was so prestigious that they held it off, off the company premises. They held it in Constantia on a wine farm. Oh. Okay. So that was the first time I went to a wine farm. I remember being sure. this wine farm, right? So there I am. I'm chilling, drying, drying the meat for all the people there. You know, you don't really socialize because you don't really feel part of everyone. So I'm busy there with, with Abu Mario and what, 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 all these guys. <laughs> yeah. Busy, you know, turning over the vars for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And then they start the presentation and they start the presentation. And the presentation is like, Joe, they make an AV for the winners. Can you imagine? I'm watching this thing. I'll never forget. I was wearing, you remember dice, dice jerseys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wearing a dice jersey. And I'm watching this thing just like this. And, and I remember they were announcing like the first one. They say, ladies yeah, yeah. and gentlemen, the moment <laughs> that everybody's been waiting for. Okay. And then they start to do like a biography of the person, you know, like this yeah. guy has... Don't, don't, don't. He's revolutionized, revolutionized <laughs> what media thinking can mean to you. I remember the wow. <laughs> And then they get to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the one, the only freaking sparks come out to Richard yeah. Proctor. You okay? Everyone is clapping. I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. And then straight after this, yeah. they do this, they do another one. Don't, 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 yeah. I'm watching them, don't, 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 ladies and gentlemen. He has put them don't, don't, in the medium of the physium of the retail. Don't, yeah. I'm just watching them. <laughs> and dude, you must, you must imagine, I'm right in the back of this thing, standing by the price stand. Yeah. And I, I, I'm six months in, six months into the company. Sure. And they go, ladies and gentlemen, the final winner is Kolisa Jessana. You know when you yeah, and and and, and the rest is sure. history, my friends. And the rest yo, is history. Yeah. On that on that note, uh, let's get it to today's theme. You know, creativity um, during the lockdown. You know, we've seen um, an increase in the number of users on TikTok. You know, people are starting to be creative. I don't know if it's out of bottom or what. So what do you think the role of creativity in this time is? Cool. So um, I think, I think uh, Pat, for me, creativity is everything during this time. And I, I, I think if, if, I, if I think about a lot of the story that I'm telling you, if, if you think of way back then when I was starting in advertising, yeah. Uh, compared to now, I think probably one of the biggest blessings that we've had, and, and it's a blessing and a curse, and I'll tell you why it's a curse. Yeah. But one of the biggest blessings that we've had is the democratization of creativity. Mm. I think back then, creativity was something that was for the select few. Um, I think it had a bit of an elitist thing to it, um, where the creatives almost protected it as such. Yeah. That, um, you, you know, it was, it was, it was just, and also I, 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 I think we had, um, you know, in advertising, we, we talk about a spray and pray approach. Yeah. So you would just put out work. There was no feedback mechanism. You didn't know how mm. people felt about your work. And, and, yeah. and, and so all the tools were on the side of the marketer yeah. and of the advertiser. Sure. And I think what has happened in the last couple of years, which for me has been a blessing, is that creativity has really taken center stage and creativity has really seen what it is to belong to the people yeah. um, as much as it belongs to, you know, the formal creative people. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and I think what's happening right now in the midst of this lockdown is probably the best example of mm -hmm. that. Um, if you okay. look, I mean, I spend my nights looking at TikTok and the creative things that people are doing. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, it, it's, it's almost like, you know, in this time, and it, it reminds me of, of a belief that I have. There's a beautiful story that's told about a kindergarten teacher who says yeah. um, whenever her kids, uh, whenever kids first get to her class, the first question she asks them is, who here is a creative? And kids' hands go up like this, and sometimes yeah, even yeah. two hands go up, right? Yeah. And she says what happens is that every year, she asks them the same question at the beginning, and fewer and fewer hands go up. Sure. Until even the kid that wants to put his hand up looks around and thinks, yeah, yeah. actually, maybe not. And so for me, that, 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 that reminds me that everybody's creative. Um, the only difference between people like ourselves who yeah. work in this field is, that, is that, that that's the other thing about creativity. It's like an ax. You've got to sharpen it all the time. You've got to sharpen it all the time. Yeah. Um, and that's the only difference. But in terms of having the inherent ability to be creative, everybody is. And I think if you to, 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 to really come down to the heart of my answer to your question, I think yeah. that the role of creativity now, as you are seeing it, um, mm. is more important than it's ever been. Sure. So um, if you guys have any questions on Zoom or on Instagram Live, please start typing your questions. Uh, Mr. X is here to answer all your questions. So in terms of um, currently, have you seen any work that that's stood out for you from brands? Um, around the lockdown, around the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? Um, <clears throat> so it's interesting. I think, I think it's been a very tough time for brands. Um, yeah. I think it's been a tough time for businesses in general. And, um, and definitely brands have, have been a part of that, of, of, of that confusion, right? Yeah. Um, how do you communicate? What do you say at this time? Who, who do you become at this time, you know? And it's been one of those things that so many of us have had to try and navigate. Yeah. And I think the mistake that you can make uh, in the midst of tragedy is to, is, to, is to lose sight of who you actually are. You yeah. know what I mean? Because, because sometimes if you're, a, if you're a skincare brand, that is, that is how you enter the conversation with regards to me. Yeah. Uh, I'm not expecting to see you entering other conversations that, 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 that you don't have credibility to speak on or about when it comes to me as a consumer. And yeah. that's been one of the things that I think for us, when I think of, 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 of my job over the past couple of weeks, we've spent a lot of time trying to, to, to work with our clients, um, to, for, for all of us to realize that we've still got a place in the world. Yeah. The, 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 this is unprecedented. So it, it, it reminds me of social media. You know, often people will tell you, do social media like this, do social media like this. Yeah. And then somebody comes in and they defy all those rules and they trend for weeks on end. So we're all trying to discover it. And so there's a couple of principles that we've been trying to form. Yeah. And, I think, and I think that's the nice thing, right, about experience. You do it once, you, you learn a few things, you do it twice, you learn a few things, and then you start to formulate sort of patterns that can actually help you. So yeah. for me, probably, if I were to say my best work that I've seen in this period has actually, brands to me actually come second. It's actually yeah. been from people and their creativity. Right. I mean, last night, watching the, the Puff Daddy concert, getting mm -hmm. all those people in, I mean, I mean when, I, when I just think about all the challenges, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. don't rest. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun. <laughs> um, yeah you know um I, I just think that people have just been so creative yeah um so for me that's that my, my hat completely goes off to people um Ooh. and whoever's watching this uh, for me it's a reminder that you are creative you have to use this time to exercise that muscle on whatever level you know there's nights when i literally get up and and for some reason i've just got two lines in my head yeah. And I'll just jot those lines down and, and I'm two lines into a poem. Whoa. You know what I mean? Sure. And, 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 and so that becomes something that's really, really important for me. So that's probably been my best work that I've seen. Yeah. And then um, I think for me, the brands that I think are getting it right are the brands that are very sensitive to the environment. I think you have to be mm -hmm. sensitive to what it is that's going on, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, 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 and for me, this is one of those times 
to put people first. Um, and I think, and I think, and I think the brands that are able to do that now yeah. uh, are going to benefit from that, especially from the positive sentiment later. Um, yeah. I, 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 I just think if we can put people at the center, if we can understand what people are going through, and then whatever piece of communication we put out, we can, yeah. we, we can say consciously, this is the purpose that this is serving. So I'll yeah. give you an example. Take chicken licking. Look at what we just did for chicken licking, right? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> um, and, 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 and for everyone who is listening in, I've given yeah. all these, I've, I've given perhaps three pieces that we've done during this time. One yeah. of them is for chicken licking. The other one is for Castle Milk Stout. And the other one is a new campaign that we're launching from today for NetBank. Um, but the interesting thing, for instance, if you, if you look at what a lot of brands have been doing, you know, it's, it's very empathetic and it's, and, and it's good, you know, and, and it's brands saying, let's stay at home, you know, just helping to reinforce this message yeah. that our government is, is trying to put out. But for instance, if you take a brand like Chicken Licken, one of the yeah. things that we, that we saw is that, you know, there, there is a unique opportunity for this brand not to necessarily do that type of message, yeah. but rather to, in the, in the brand's character, which is using humor, yeah. and trust me, there is, there is no time that needs humor such as this. Absolutely. And as a brand which credibly represents that genre, we yeah. just thought, well, everybody's talking about how much they miss their chicken licking wings, <laughs> Everybody's talking about how much they miss this, how much they miss yeah. this about the brand, rock my soul, yeah. whatever the case may be. So yeah. what if we just create, take a piece of content that we've created, we mm -hmm. get a hold of Rapulana at home, we tell him yeah. to re-record his voice over the freaking, um, over, the, o o over his phone. We get our lady actress to do the same. Uh, we yeah. get our, our editors ready to work with cell phone footage and basically mm -hmm. recreate an entire ad. And that's sure. the kind of unorthodox thinking that this yeah. condition has inspired. Yeah. So, uh, Bongani is asking if uh, the current agency model, do you think it will survive post-COVID? Bongani is asking a very, very good question. Um, and, and, you know, what's interesting is I don't have the answers. Um, but I think that I, I, I can tell you this much. I can tell you that um, nothing in the context of how we do things um, is going to be the same. And, you know, yeah. uh, amongst my group of friends, this is not work related, but amongst my group of friends, we yeah. generally have a saying, we say, if, we, if you're not on the edge, if you're not on the edge of, at all times, if you're not thinking like somebody on the edge, then you might as well be dead because that's how quickly this freaking universe is moving. Yeah. A month ago, everybody had plans for where they were going to be this Easter. Absolutely. Two weeks ago, you know, we were thinking very, very different things about the world that we live in. So if you're yeah. not on the edge, um, you know, uh, any type of arcade thinking, I don't think will make it beyond this. Sure. So I suppose the quick answer for me uh, with regards to your question, Bongani, I don't believe that businesses that will conduct business as usual post this experience will be able to survive in the future or in the yeah. world that we're going into. So just to follow up on that, do you think um, five-year plans for brands will still be relevant? <coughs> what will be the, the most re I mean, a reasonable <coughs> amount of time from a, from a planning point of view? You see, I think for me, what's, there's a difference between brands' visions. So brands have five-year visions. They've got yeah, yeah. long-term visions. I don't think that visions necessarily uh, have to change. Um, but I think that the way that you navigate towards that vision definitely will need to be relooked. Yeah. So I think that if, uh, you, you, you see for me... It, it, I always think that, or, or the way that we, we, we work within the company is that whatever it is that we plan, mm -hmm. um, there's got to be a certain level that can, that can adapt and react to what the market is doing. Yeah. So we know what our vision is for 2023. We know what our vision is for 10 years time. Yeah. But what we, what, what, we, what we are always working on changing, and even that can change, by the way, because we could achieve our 2023 vision in 2021, and then, and then where do we go? 
But I do mm. think that you need to be very clear about the high level view of where you see yourself. And then the practical steps are the ones that need to adapt to what is happening at all times. All right. There's a question from Edmond Masong. He's saying, if your brand stockpiled in your, in your consumer's cupboard right now, do we consider long-term implications that come with um, overconsumption of our brand? How do you avoid the negative association? So this speaks to the stockpiling of toilet papers. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it, that, that's a difficult one for me. Um, I suppose I can only answer it as myself. Um, first of all, I didn't, I didn't stockpile. But I think even <laughs> if I had, I yeah. think even if I had, uh, my brand is still my brand. You know what I mean? Like if I go to, if I, I love star chocolate as an example. That's, 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 yeah. my, that, that's one of my weaknesses. And it's, and, it's, and it's getting the worst of me during this lockdown. But for sure. instance, I know that star is my brand. And mm. I got five at the beginning of the week. Yeah. Um, and, and I've hardly had any because I'm trying to be disciplined. But, yeah. but the point that I'm trying to make is that, is that that thing could last me. It could last me a month but it's still a brand that I enjoy. I'll still have it in the time that, and if I had to throw it away, I'm not sure if that would put me off the brand. Yeah. Um, so so I, I, I don't think that it's something to really be concerned about. Um, All right. People being off, getting off brands. Ed Just Touch is asking, what positives can we take from this situation from a creative point of view? Um, I think that the positives that we can take from this situation from a creative point of view is I feel like we've been, we've been reminded of certain things. And I said it earlier on that we've been reminded that creativity is not an exclusive right of the creative. Yeah. Um, we've been reminded that everybody is creative inherently and everybody can tap into their creativity, which for me puts a lot more pressure on us yeah. <laughs> um, I remember, I mean, I mean, I mean, I remember there was, um, you know, one of my team members uh, mm. sent me a message the other day. They said to me, <laughs> somebody is commenting five star. Yes, <laughs> it is five star, right? That, that, that chocolate, yes, yes, five star. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, one of my team members sent me a message in the week to say, um, you know, people are starting to do all this content for chicken licking. Yeah. Um, you know, um, should we not just take that and make that our ads, you know? Mm. And I remember saying that I think it's really amazing because, because the fact that they'd be, they'd be making a certain type of content for the brand means yeah. that the brand is ingrained in their heads as representing this personality, doing this type of work. And as a result, a lot of the things that we are receiving that people are making on their own sure. um, for some of our brands, are uh, everything that people are making is in line with what we have made the brand's personality to be. And when I say we, I'm not just talking about the advertising agency. I'm talking about yeah. us with our marketers, with the brand itself. So mm -hmm. everybody, in terms of how the brand shows up, the work that we are seeing people do is, yeah. is in line with the personality of these brands. And that for me yeah. reminds me of the importance that you have in the context of chartering what that brand personality, what that brand vision should be, and then inspiring people to want to be a part of that. Yeah. So, 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 so for me, it's important as creatives that we remember that we have a duty and a job. I mean, one of my favorite artists is, um, one of my favorite artists is, 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 um, is Great Joy. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you know him, you know Great Joy, right? Great um, joy. He's a, he's a, he's a, no. Yes, great joy. He's a he's a he's a an illustrator. He's, no, he's a painter. He's a painter. Oh, painter. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, he's a fantastic, fantastic painter. Um, mm. And 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 for instance, for me, when I think of guys like that, when I think of guys like Abu Nelson and everybody else. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the context of what's happening now, you know, everybody's getting out those old sketchbooks. Everybody's getting out those canvases. And for me, what, 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 what that should do to people like them is that is that, that should inspire them, you know, to, to inspire yeah. us even more. Because a lot of people are pulling out those things because they've seen how the art scene in South Africa is just, is just booming again. And it's just taking out because so many people are doing amazing work. 
and then they inspire yeah. these other people who also start doing that kind of work, but then that should inspire yeah. them to do even more. So that's why I'm saying that it's this positive cycle that I think is good for everybody. Um, and, sure. it's good, and, it, and it's also good for the artists because now more people are interested in art. More people mm. want to buy art, more people want to see art. So I yeah. think that it's a really positive uh, momentum that starts to happen. Great. Um, the, for those that just joined us, we're talking about creativity during um, the lockdown. So we, uh, Tolisa was just unpacking some of uh, the work that he's done and also what marketers should be doing. Um, so we have another question here on, on Zoom. As a creative, mm -hmm. how much COVID-19 messaging do you, do you think we need to hear before we suffer from campaign fatigue of hearing the same thing over and over again? Every brand, every brand wants to say something and it's getting tedious. That's one of my favorite questions. That's whoever <laughs> that, who is that? Who asked that question? It's Musa Ntwambe. Musa, what a fantastic, fantastic question. You know, you know it's, it, this is such an important thing. Um, we've, we've actually created a bit of a matrix for our clients. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah. about what do you want to say? In fact, why do you want to say something? Let's just start there. <laughs> why do you want to say something? Because everyone is saying something, Olisa. But that's a very <laughs> bad reason to speak. <laughs> that is a that is a very very bad reason to speak. Yeah. I I haven't I I've hardly heard any consumers that are saying I'm very upset because yeah. because so and so hasn't said anything. Yeah, you're hardly hearing that kind of narrative coming from from consumers. So for me, something that really really becomes important is you've got to be very clear on what you want to say and why you want to say it. We've had to actually tell a lot of our brands yeah. that, guys, th there's no need for you to say anything here. Or there's no yeah. need to say this kind of messaging. Because this is another part to Musa's question that I think, yeah. I think is, 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 is implicit, but is not explicit. Because what he's also saying to me, if I'm hearing him properly, is he's saying, yeah. brands are saying the same thing. Pretty much. And that, and that for me is, 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 is and that's why I used, um, I, that's why I used Chicken Licken as one of the first examples that I wanted to talk about. Because yeah. we, could, we could do something that's completely out of character for Chicken Licken, something that's soppy and that's mm -hmm. talking about, okay, no, now it's time to be serious. No, it's not time to be serious. Yeah. Everybody, we've got enough things that are telling us to be serious. We Absolutely. could do something, we could use something that could make us laugh while still yeah. getting the message. We also so have the government. We also have the government telling us serious stuff every day. I mean, we can only take exactly. so much seriousness. Exactly. So for me, and for us as a company, so for us as yeah. Joe Public, that is one of the biggest things that we are trying to do right now. If we're yeah. going to communicate yeah. for a brand, if we're going to communicate for a brand, yeah. it has to be a unique point of view mm -hmm. that only we can say yeah. in the way that we're saying it. It cannot be a generic message. So sure. I've sent you three pieces of work there. Yeah, right? I'm going to share with them for, I mean, with my followers after this. So we'll share these yeah. three pieces of work for you. But this is a perfect yeah. example. So to use three pieces of work, I've already spoken about chicken licking, right? Yeah. So I think we can agree that only chicken licking could have said that message in that way. Use yeah. those characters, etc. Yeah. So let me go to the second one. Let's go to the second brand that I wanted to talk about. The second brand that I wanted to make an example of is Castle Milk Stout. Yeah. Okay. Now, in the, in, in the essence of what Castle Milk Stout stands for, Castle Milk Stout is a brand that is, that is very much steeped in African heritage. It is about, yep. um, it is about um, you know, it's, it's a brand that has found it, its way into a lot of African culture. If you go and Ukum Sebenzi, Castle Milk Stout is one of the brands that you'll yeah. find that fits very naturally into that kind of environment. And if you look at the work that we've been doing with the brand over the past yeah. couple of years since we've been working with them, it's very much been around how do you embrace that as your, as your founding story and how do you take it into today's world? Now, yeah. the interesting thing is on that brand, we found a beautiful insight. Mm -hmm. And that insight is, you must always remember that when you think of Castle Milk Start, you think of the old and the yeah. new. Absolutely. So Castle Milk Stout has to bridge the gap between our parents, mm -hmm. our grandparents, yeah. and ourselves. 
in terms of the, of the space within which it plays, right? Yeah. Now, here's an interesting thing. There was a natural um, insight that came out of this. And that is the fact that what happens around this time? Where would most of us be around this time? Mm -hmm. We would have gone home. home. Yeah. We'd be home. For Easter holidays, Absolutely. we go home to be yeah. with our, our parents, ones. with our grandparents, our loved ones. So based on that, we, we've created a piece for Castle Mokstart that challenges the concept of where is home? What is home? Mm. Is home a place that you go to? Sure. Or is home a place that lives within you? Mm. And based on that, we've used this kind of narrative to send, to create a piece of communication yeah. that is an ode to our parents and our grandparents back at home mm. to tell them that they are the custodians of our culture. They are the custodians of everything that we are. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, what they are runs in our blood. So therefore, if we don't physically get with them, it doesn't mean that we are not with them in spirit. Sure, and it is for profound. that reason, and it is for that reason that we will protect them this year. Yeah. We'll protect them from harm. Sure. We'll protect them from danger by mm. not coming home this Easter. So that yeah. was the brand. So, so that was the message for yeah. Castle Mukstad. And that's the piece of work that we'll share with you after this. So that's a second one for me. So yeah. as you can see, I think already what you, you're starting to see is that these are very different messages from what you're seeing in the mainstream. Yeah. Based on nuance and based on very, very strong conceptual ideas. The third one, yeah. the last one that I wanted to talk about is NetBank. Now, now what we've done for NetBank is, is also, it, it took a lot. We've never done something like this before. But basically, a lot of people will know that the, 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 there's a character that we use for the NetBank brand. Um, yeah. The character's name is Smoo. And Smoo yeah. is, an, is, 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 is a cab driver, right? Yeah. And he's always carrying people and they're having these conversations about money. And, yeah. then, and then this is where they end up talking about the brand. Yeah. So what we then decided is that there is no time where people are more concerned about their money than right now. Absolutely. So there is absolutely a place for NetBank to have a voice right now. Yeah. But it cannot be a voice. It cannot be a voice that's generic. Yeah. And it cannot be a voice that doesn't take into account what is happening in our world now. So what we've decided to do is that we've decided to take Smu. Yeah. The, the guy that people know as Smu. Yeah. He's using for the new campaign. The new campaign is completely shot on his iPhone. Yeah. And he starts off the ads by saying, hi, my name is Smu, the cab driver. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, my name is Max. My name is Max and I'm an actor. And just like you, I'm stuck in my house during lockdown. Sure. And I don't know where my next cent is going to come from. Yeah. And because I'm having these kind of, of, of realizations by being on myself during lockdown, there's no camera, there's no director. I'm doing yeah. all of this by myself. But I'm starting to realize a lot of things about how I was spending my money. Mm. And, and, and for me, the, the, the greatest thing that happened with that campaign is when Kaya called me. You, you know Kaya, Tanga, ne? Yeah, yeah. When Kaya called me yesterday and Kaya says to me, Chap, have you seen that I've been cooking? And I said, Chap, <laughs> I've seen that you've been cooking. I'm freaking, fin I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted, Kaya. I never knew you could do this. And he, says, X. and he says to me, X, for the first time, I've realized how much money we spend mm. on going out. <gasps> yeah. And, sure. and, and for me, that was just such a blessing. You know, the universe or God saying, flip, you're on the right path because you are you are literally touching on something that everybody can relate to. So in a nutshell, to answer, uh, I think it was Musa, to answer Musa's yeah. question, I think it is absolutely, absolutely possible to do work that can be relevant in this time, that can be differentiated, that has a reason for being, that adds value to people's lives. Yeah. But in order to do that, you've got to communicate, not for the sake of communicating. Absolutely. So actually, interestingly, I was having a conversation with my friend who's a strategist, and we were like, we're tired of seeing drone shots, I mean, ads with drone shots and empty roads. If you, if you look at the automobile industry, all mm. the ads pretty much look the same. You know? yeah. So if you can't say something different, then say nothing, I guess. Um, we're going to take one last question uh, from yeah. Buga underscore T. Dot. He's saying, how will 
advertising alcohol now, now that there's a, there's a new legislation which prohibits advertisers to promote, uh, is there such a legislation, uh, promote alcohol using celebrities? How will they promote alcohol? Uh -oh. No, there is, I'm not aware of such. Yeah, and I remember the last time actually I saw you, <laughs> We were at that yeah. uh, Away.org event and nothing. Yes, exactly. Was, was no, 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 there's, there's, uh, there isn't anything. But, 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 but what I do think is, is, worth, is worth mentioning is, um, you know, it's so tough, eh? and, and, and I suppose this is a conversation. I, 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 laugh, um, I laugh a lot when I, when I watch social media because yeah. I, I feel like often we, we, we overestimate what it is that social media can give us in the context of answers. Yeah. Um, on social media, you will find every single opinion that there is. <laughs> so, so, so if you, if you are expecting, if you are expecting for cohesion in, in the context of thinking, you won't get it. Um, and, and, and I suppose for yeah. me, this taps into a bigger question. You know, there are people that say there should be, we shouldn't sell liquor in South Africa. You'll find those people in the context of a platform where we can all speak and you'll hear that. And that is a very valid reason. There are other people that say, we should have the choice to choose what we want to consume. So yeah. don't, 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 uh, don't limit my choices in order for me to live a certain life that may go with your morality or whatever the case may be. There's yeah. other people that then will go further to say, okay, but then let's look at things that are social ills or people or things that contribute to other things, et cetera, et cetera. So you end up in this space where if you look at South Africa as we are right now, these yeah. things, things like liquor, things like tobacco, et cetera, these yeah. things are allowed. But then what is encouraged is for people to consume them, to consume them responsibly. And yeah. I think some of the things that for me we forget is that there are jobs that are attached to these things. You know, they, these are entire industries that, that, yeah. that, 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 help, what, that help the country work i suppose yes. for, for 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 as long as they are legal so my mind is not to say whether they should be legal or not but when they are these mm -hmm. these these kind of industries are providing you know providing you could argue maybe cars provide but they also kill da, da, da. there's there's all those kind of arguments yeah. but the the big thing for me is very much around if you are allowed to operate how do you operate responsibly and I think for me, one of, the, one of the biggest things that I've seen out of liquor companies, those that have done it right, um, is, 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 is where, even, even, even the event that we attended that a lot of people don't know about, basically, yeah. um, a lot of the, the liquor companies have come together to set their own responsible advertising or responsible communication guidelines. Mm. Uh, things like we won't advertise certain type of narratives um, at all, others yeah, not yeah. within a certain time. We won't have anybody, we won't promote underage drinking by having anyone within, the, the, for, to be in an ad, you'd, I, you know, you're probably looking at about, the, the legal drinking age is 18, they, they won't yeah. have anyone who's, who's under, I think it's 26, 20, 26, if you are under 26, you cannot be in an alcohol ad. So there is a lot of things that, uh, of responsible things that, you know, that some of these industries are, are actually doing. And that's why I'm saying that, you know, some of the ones, that's why I, I, I even thought of something like Castle Mixed Out, because Castle yeah. Mixed Out is not necessarily selling you beer, but it's, 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 it's delivering a message, which I think is a good message, um, yeah. which, 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 they are, which for me is, is actually quite a nice way of being able to say that we can communicate and spread a good message without, without having to say to people, buy this product. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. on that note, I think that's where we'll, we'll leave today's uh, dialogue. Thank you so much for making time to speak to us. I think uh, people got a taste of what you're about. And when things are back to normal and we start selling uh, tickets for large events, people will certainly coop themselves, um, themselves a, a ticket and, and do join us. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, everyone on Zoom, Instagram. Uh, please Pat. be safe. And yeah, thank you so much. Just on my side, just on yeah. my side. Um, I just wanted to thank you as well. I think, I think to keep conversations going, 
during this time is so important. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and I just want to thank you for taking that initiative. I think we can all, all learn so much from each other, um, yeah. especially at an unprecedented time where we were all just trying to figure things out. Yeah. And I just want to encourage everyone um, to use this time to reflect, to rejuvenate, to reset, and, uh, and just stay safe out there. And we'll see ourselves on the other side. And I believe we'll be a better world. Thank you so much. That's humbling. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers, everyone.